Hey guys, welcome to a new video and in this video I'm going to show you how I embroidered this tote bag. So this is part one of this mini series where I show you how I embroidered this. Because if I put it all in one video it would be a little long so I decided to split it into two parts. One where I show how I made the flowers and one how I show how I made the leaves. In this part I'm showing the flowers. So I'm showing how to make these little roses. I'm showing one technique to make all these other flowers. It's really easy. I'm also showing how I made the inside of the sunflower and how I made these little flowers. So let's get into the video. I started by just roughly sketching out where I wanted everything to be. And then I started on the sunflowers. So I pulled the string in from the back and then I'm going back into the fabric where I pulled my string out. So in the bottom of the petal and I'm pulling the needle through the fabric to the top of the petal. Then I'm pulling it through. I'm just making the loop a little bit smaller. And then I am pulling my needle through the loop. And when I pull that, you are left with a little petal. So to secure it, you just uh, go to the fabric again at the top of the petal and you go back down to the bottom of the next petal and then you can just repeat those same steps for all the petals. It is actually a really easy technique and you can use it for so many things. So I really uh, would recommend learning this technique as one of the first if you're just starting embroidery. So now to make the inside of the sunflower, I'm going to use a kind of technique with knots so you can kind of feel like the rough-ish texture uh, that would be like the inside of a sunflower. So you start by just bringing in the needle from the back. It doesn't really matter where you start, I just started somewhere at the side. You pull the, the string all the way through. I used wool to just make it a little thicker and a little less work. Then you're just going to make a simple knot with the string and you're going to push it so it is really close onto the fabric. Then you're just going to poke in your needle a little next to the knot, pull it through and you're going to repeat that. So you're just going to make a second knot. and push it really really tight to the fabric and that's how you're going to fill up the entire inside of the sunflower and this does take a little bit of time but i think it looks really cool so yeah that's just what i am doing right now Sometimes I decided to do a double knot if the knot turned out a little bit smaller and I just didn't really have a plan, I just tried to fill it all up. So then when I had made most of the knots on this side, I filled in the space between the knots by making these knots in the loop that you get when you sew. So I pulled like the needle through, then you get a loop and by pulling the needle through that you can just fill in the gaps and it's a little less work than making more and more knots and it will still seem like you filled everything in so it's a bit of like a trick. So yeah, I just repeated that for the entire inside of the sunflower and although it's kind quite some work, I think it looks really cool and it also feels really nice. Now for the roses, I really like this technique. So you need to draw like a circle for where you're starting and you, you'll pull your uh, string in from the back and then you're just going to uh, make these stitches from the outside to the middle and you're going to make five of them. I 
guess you could make more or less, but I have found five works really well. Then you go to the inside and out just a little bit to the left. And then you're going to start making the rows. And what you're going to do is you're going to go under the first string and then over the second and then under and then over. So you can see here, I'm going over this string and then under that string, over that string. And by doing that, you're kind of weaving a rose in a round shape. So again, under and over. and under and over and just repeating that and it's really satisfying to do because you can just show, slowly see the rows coming together you don't really have to think it isn't hard you just need to make sure that you're not pulling the string too tight because otherwise you're going to get like a bit of a knot you just need to slowly like lay the string in circles until the rose is completely filled up uh, till the edges of the strings and then you make a knot in the background I also made a little bit of a smaller rose next to the big one in just a slightly different color and I think that looks pretty cool. You need to keep in mind though that it, the rose is always going to be a little smaller than your original circle so dr draw them a little bit bigger than you actually want the rose to be but I think these roses are really nice. Okay now for the third flowers I am actually going to use almost the same technique as for the sunflowers. The only difference is that you won't uh, be sticking the needle into the exact, exact same hole as it came out, but a little bit to the right in this case. So the petals are a little bit more open, if that makes any sense. Well, you, you will see what I mean. And then when you're going back in for the next petal, you're just going to go to the, in this case, the left of the first petal. And that way the petals really touch each other and form a, like a more complete circle than with the sunflower. And because the, like the middle of the flower was a lot smaller here, I think that looks better uh, if you do this technique than if you would like close them at the bottom. But it is almost the same. So that's what I just repeated for the rest of the flower until I was all the way round. So now for the inside. Again, just bringing my um, string in from the back, I am now going to stitch, but kind of around petals. It's hard to explain, but you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of um, bringing the string underneath the stitches of the first petal. And then stitching back um, over the pe first petal. And by repeating that, I am just creating a little circle that is completely around the petal. So it seems like they're coming out uh, behind the circle, if that makes any sense. Well, at least you can see what I'm doing. So when I finished that circle, I started making these vertical stripes across, not really using any really special technique, just simple stitches and making vertical stripes just filling up the entire circle leaving like a millimeter between them as you can see then when i had filled that up i started making horizontal stripes and weaving so going over under over under the vertical stripes as you can see And then I'm just going in back the other way around again, over, under, over, under. And I think this uh, creates this really cool like beehive-ish pattern. I'm, that's probably not what it's called, but I, it reminds me of like the bees. And I think it looks really cool, but it was kind of hard sometimes to do it because it was a really small surface but it also meant it didn't take really long. And I think this is another nice technique to make the inside of a flower. So 
for these flowers for the inside i am just using a really simple technique just a backstitch with which means you pull it through then go back to the like the opening and then pull it through again and i just did that in a little circle all around just stitching back every time into the hole that i left And then when I had finished the first circle, I made another circle inside of that and I left a hole where you could see the fabric in the middle because I thought that looked cool. Now I am starting on the petals and it is almost the same technique as with the sunflower. Again, I mean, like I told you, this technique can be used for so many things, but it's a little different because this time you just, it starts the same by just pulling it through. and then securing it at the top. But instead of going to the next petal immediately, you're going to go back to the bottom of this petal. And then you're going to stitch again um, on top of the petal, just to the top again. And by doing this, you just make the petal a little bit fuller and I think this especially looks really nice on these really small petals like I'm doing here. And I, then you can just go to the bottom of the second petal just, with, just like with the first method. I'm having a really hard time putting the needle through here. Ah. But by doing this you just make really full little tiny little petal, petals that don't have a hole in them. Uh, which the sunflower does have. And I think both of the techniques look really cool. But... For this flower I decided to go with this one and here I'm just repeating those the same steps. And then I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of the flower going all the way around and making sure each petal is right next to the other petal so not leaving a gap in between. Then when the first round was done, I went in with a darker blue and just did use the exact same method and just made a little petal between each two light blue petals to create another layer of petals and I think this looks really cool. And I repeated the same with a purple flower just the exact same method but just with a light and dark purple which I think looks really cool as well. I actually think these flowers are my favorite from all the kinds that I'm showing here but let me know in the comments which are yours. So for these last little flowers I am actually using the same method as the sunflowers again but in, instead of going next to the last petal you're just uh, going to make them from the same inside so the you're all make, making all the petals starting from one inside and I think those leave just these really simple easy flowers and I make them in light and dark purples to kind of complement the flowers on the other side but yeah I think these all look really cool and I think it's pretty amazing that you can make them all with just such simple techniques Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll link the second part up above so you can watch that too. And please consider subscribing. Bye!